Oh, we use the uh, extreme fish food quite a bit in our shop. Uh, we like it very much. Uh, it's very palatable for the fish. We uh, a lot of times fish that don't eat other things will eat the pellets, which is a great thing. Hi, everybody. John here with another FinCast. This is part two as we take a look at how I've redone my 120 reef. And it's really not about redoing it. A lot of people get excited when they redo their aquariums. But in my case, I wanted to make the situation better because my reef had become so frustrating that I had stopped working on it. I'd stopped paying attention to it. I'd started looking at some of my freshwater aquariums. And honestly, I would tell you that I was, I was probably about that close to deciding I didn't want to do reef aquariums anymore. That's how frustrated I was. And the reason was that I had settled for a setup that wasn't good enough. I'd gotten in a hurry. Uh, we had taken a bunch of shortcuts when we were doing the plumbing and we had gotten a sump that was too big, but I'd spent the money on the sump. And so I thought, well, I'll just live with it. But it was really preventing me from running the aquarium the way that it needed to be run, the way that I wanted to run it. And honestly, uh, it was creating so much frustration that I then didn't do what I needed to do on my fish tank. And the, I guess the suggestion there is, is that that might be a problem that you run into as well. So uh, the aquarium was surviving, but it was not thriving. And there was no way that I could take the current setup and make the aquarium the way that I wanted it to be and have the success that I wanted to see with that aquarium. And that was even with a lot of expensive lighting and what had been a very expensive, but as it turned out, too large sump. So in uh, part one, I showed you some of the frustration and some of the way that the aquarium uh, had begun to look, uh, which was not good. I was embarrassed to show you the plumbing. I even put a hashtag in there. Well, at least I'm honest. Uh, but don't judge, and I would appreciate it if, uh, if you really want to be snarky in the comments, don't. Uh, if you want to comment and say, wow, I've had that same experience, then maybe others could share with that as well. So please comment, but please keep the snarkiness to yourself. Even though I probably deserve it, I don't, I don't need to hear about it. So bottom line, here we are now in part two, and we've, uh, I've just shown you in part one the beautiful zero-edge sump that we want to install in the tank. And this time, we'll take you through the process, show you the pulling of the aquarium, how we uh, kept the, uh, everything alive in the meantime, and then put the aquarium back in place and replumbed it with a nice, clean look and a sump that's easy to work on. And the most important thing is that now I have room underneath my stand to add some of the automation that I know I need because of the way that I live my life, because of, uh, of how busy that I am, and because I know my own tendencies uh, as a reef keeper, uh, that I know that I am not going to be the day-to-day -day guy with that reef that I wish I could be. Some people are, some people have the ability to do that. And you have to ask yourself, when you get into this, are you the type of person who really will test the water as often as you think you will? Or do you get distracted? Does life get in the way? Do you have kids? Do you have soccer? Do you have a sports league that you like to do? Do you like to watch the NFL on Sundays instead of, uh, instead of uh, working on your reef tank? Because that happens. But you've got to ask yourself, would automation make it better? So in part two, we'll show you how we pulled the whole thing, put the sump in there, show you some of the, uh, the new advances and techniques that make the sump a whole lot more efficient, the system more efficient. And I'll also show you how I went to more of a minimal aquascape, which I think is, uh, is a big improvement. In order to accomplish my goal, and this was the hard part, it was basically a day-long project where we had to remove the aquarium from the stand in order to get the old sump out because it was too big to come out through the front doors. And that meant that we had to drain the water, we had to uh, take all the rock out, take all the livestock out, I kept it alive in buckets, set the tank down, and this really is a messy job. I recommend, guys, don't do this on a day when your wife is home unless she's extremely understanding. I'm just saying. Uh, but anyway, you pull everything, and here's the uh, old plumbing. Man, I hated this stuff. And this is a combination of PVC piping and spa hosing that a lot of people use. And if you use it, it's hard to direct it. It's hard to guide it in many cases. You could have done better than I did with the uh, plastic or the PVC plumbing, but be that as it may, I was ready to fling this stuff across the backyard by the time we were done. Here it is sitting on the front porch. Then we were ready to put the brand new zero edge sump in under the tank and put it in the stand and begin to create the space that I really wanted. After that, my son Ben uh, is a 
big, big fan now, and I totally agree with him, of using the silicone hosing, which is flexible, the silicone tubing, and it just makes it a lot easier to set up your tank and to get a nice, clean look underneath your sump. And so that's what we used, and it made a big difference. Okay, so probably the least interesting, but I'll show it first. We've added a Eheim Auto Feeder. We use that on many of our accounts. I've got the AI Hydra Lights, so plenty of light. And here comes the Reaquascape on the aquarium. Hope you like it. There we go. I'm going with basically a patch reef on one side with a little bit of rubble island off on the other and that's what I was looking for in terms of the infrastructure the base of my reef and then we look down here and look how clean the sump area is so everything is clean and easy to get to got a coral view octopus skimmer that's working great much bigger filter sock than before and of course we've got the awesome sump from Zero Edge which is beautiful and then now what I have is all this space on the side with the smaller sump where I can begin to add some automation so now it's been going on six weeks maybe seven weeks since that changeover happened and the aquarium is doing much, much better. I've done a couple of things since then. Uh, number one, I've attempted to add some anemones. Uh, I had a failed attempt with a ritteri, which you can read about in the blog at fincasters.com. And then I also have what so far has been a successful attempt to add a sea bay anemone to the tank. If you click on the card right over here, uh, you'll be able to take a look at that video and see a little bit more of the tank and actually see how that anemone project is going with my frostbite clownfish. So that's a couple of things that's, that has worked out. Uh, and then also, uh, I've gone out and bought some corals from mountaincorals.com. Uh, everything you buy from that particular organization, which, yes, my, my son does run. Uh, but all the money goes back to a local museum, so 100% of the profits are returned to help support the upkeep of the aquariums, which are free and open to the public at Center in the Square in Roanoke, Virginia. So I added some new corals, and I'll be doing some videos in the future about how those corals are coming along, and I've been working in the garage drilling some very specific pieces of rock, so I'm hoping to be able to position some additional pieces of rock and, and those corals in the tank. So up Updates on that, I'm sure, as the year goes along. But I've also added automated vodka dosing, and I'll be covering that in the very next FinCast following this one. Once again, now that the sump is out of the way and I have some room to do things, I wanted to get ahead of this system a little bit so that I don't have to be on it all the time. And when I am, I'm not reaching around something that I don't want to reach around. So I'll show you how we used a peristolic pump with automated vodka dosing, and that'll be coming up in the next FinCast. Bottom line is the aquarium is doing great. All of the corals I've put in there are doing very well. Uh, some of the ones that I've had in there for a long time are doing better than they ever have. Of course, the fish are still uh, engaged and still fun to watch, and I've still kind of set up my aquascape uh, to my standard, which has the fish interacting with the rocks and not swimming back and forth in front of it, which is a particular uh, style of aquascape that I don't care for. I like to see my fish engaging with the environment and swimming in and out of the rocks and behind it and through the coral and so forth and and that's exactly what I'm getting I think that that is that's something that you should strive for when you set up your aquarium especially if you're interested in the fish because it will make it all that much more engaging before I go I just want to let you know I'm working on a couple of projects with Seachem they have sent me a new product called Phosphiltrum you can see it right there uh, Phosphiltrum is an agent that you put into your filtration system that takes out uh, most of the, well, it's, a, it's basically a GFO, so it, it removes phosphate and silicates. Uh, I've been using that in the 120. I'll tell you more about that as we go ahead, and I'll also have some information on the blog with it. I'm in, I'm in touch with CCAM, and they do a real good job of answering my questions, and I'll pass the answers on to you that I've learned. And then this is also on the freshwater side, uh, aquasolium black uh, humate. I think I'm saying that right, humate or humate. But basically, uh, this is a new freshwater substrate. Let me tell you a little bit about it just real quickly. 
Uh, it is derived from actual soil. Uh, CCAM describes this as an ideal substrate for planted aquariums and shrimp nano aquariums. Essentially what it does is it lowers the pH and it softens the water, which would also make it excellent uh, for a uh, for a discus aquarium because of course fish from the uh, from South America uh, absolutely love that soft acidic water so that's something else so I'll be setting up a freshwater aquarium using solely uh, this product and we'll be following the development of that planted aquarium as we go it's uh, the aquarium I have is too big to do shrimp with so we'll be using the aquasolum uh, and that'll be coming up uh, in the early part of 2016. So something else to look forward to. In the meantime, thanks for watching this FinCast. Please click around. I'm sure you'll find something you like. Check out the blog on Aquasolum as well. Uh, CCAM has already answered a lot of my questions about that, and I'll have that at FinCasters.com. And in the meantime, I'll see you in the next FinCast.